Okay. Oh, hello, good to see you there. Welcome aboard the engine bay, or, well, it certainly is the engine bay, because this is the source of power to the 928 EV8, and this is where the battery's going to go. We can no longer sling it underneath. It looks stupid there. There's no ground clearance. It needs to be repackaged and put here. Now, I can tell you I've already done about a dozen different battery designs, and I think this is about the most competent one loosely. This is, this is rough again that I've come up with. You can see we've got 18 batteries there. There are four quad bricks of four organised. This time they're on their side. They're not laying flat. They're on their side, which is an approved way to mount them. So cooling plates, each with four batteries attached. So four fours are 16 and two more on top makes 18. So that's the plan and I think that's going to work here. But the key dimensions for the frame, it has to fit, obviously. So let's just check. 550 tall, 920 long, 640 wide. Those are the key numbers. Let's see how they go. 920 is just to there. 920 is to there. We've easily got a thousand, so no problem for length. These are the engine mount points. Obviously a very good place to mount it. And sitting across the top of them, 640 is tight. 630 would be better. Let's see if we can trim a bit of fat out of that. But at 630, does it clear the steering box? We've got a steering box just here. We need to make sure, and we do. Which leads us to the difficult one, which is height. Now, the plan says 550. 530 is fine. 550 is too tight. It would clear, but only just too close for comfort. So let's work off 530. We trim that down to 630. 530, 920. That'll work. Now, a 928 doesn't handle as well as a 944 or a 968. They're really good open road GT cars, but in tight twisty stuff, when you're on the brakes, they can, they can plow a little bit. So we want to reduce that characteristic if we can by having less weight up the front than a standard car. Obviously, we want to get the weight as rearward as possible. The further behind the center line of the front wheels, the better. Try and get it as rearwards as possible. Same with these guys on top. They should just be there. Now you might think, why don't you put these two guys in the tunnel? They don't fit. This is a cooling plate for one battery. We're going to need 18 of these. Um, mainly organised like this. You can get one battery there because they're in pairs and quads. It doesn't really help to have just one battery sitting back there. For a start, this is an area we need for the battery management system, which is part of the existing battery pack. So really they've got to be here. Four, 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 one, two on top, just here. Not quite all the way back, just a little further forward. So this was my design called Herman. So I'm going to do a new one called Adolf. And so we start. Matt's a busy boy. This is where the commitment starts. I hope my dimensions are right. I'm pretty new at this, but uh, 920 long, I reckon, mate. Yeah. The episode's already about a minute old. We haven't had any sparks yet. That's it. We got. Give me. Three seconds, three, two, one. <laughs> I've never seen a clean workbench. You put some effort into this, getting that Well, it's, it's nice to use it for its intended purpose, not a, a volcano of tools. Yeah, very nice. Ah, this is how you make sure you get your right angles. Yep, so... That's, that's, that's nice. We'll put some fences here. And then we'll... Okay. We'll on. get this like that. Yep. And we'll set our width up on this with an adjustable one. Mm -hmm. And then... We can just tack that, we know it's all flat, square, and we'll take it out and work out our height. I reckon 530 is what we'll work off. 530. So that's pretty much bang on 625 there. 626 maybe, we just tap it over a mill and we're pretty good. Okay, well I didn't stuff up the first one, that's good. Yep, no, that's, that looks 
Yeah, we can sort of angle and pick up off this front member. Yep. Or would you pick up off these these mounts under here? Um, yeah. Off these, these suspension pickup points? Yeah. Because they're really strong. Yep. If we have like corner bracketry where it, you drop it in. Yep. And it can't go forward because yep. it's got a, an edge. And we can build brackets off there. So when we go to put it in and out, it's simple again. Yep. This can all get so moved. So say if we push, if you're going to push this all the way back. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty good. That's fixed. That's fixed. Like it's never going to grow that way. Yep. And it nicely misses the steering rack down here. Yeah. Yep. Straight up, it's to five, length five thirty. Yeah, and that's sort of it is up a bit. We can tilt it forward there. Okay. We can actually push it back probably further then. Yeah. But our height grows when we. It only grows a tiny bit here, but importantly, yeah. it comes down in the middle. It comes down at the front. Yeah. Carry on. Yep. The engineer says the whole case has got to withstand nine Gs of deceleration. That's a worst case crash. Yep. So 250 kilos times nine is over two tons, like two and a quarter ton. That's a lot of... That's, that's the sheer force on the bolts. So, yeah, that's huge. So the bolts will have to be at least the same grade as the um, engine mounts for the 928. Obviously. Today's sponsor is Who Gives a Crap Toilet Paper. Well, that was easier than I thought. Interesting, we still got to put the strut brace through there. It's a stack for them. Yeah, just fitting them in. It took about eight different designs. Underneath the lamp. It's good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Close it. Just little things can be tricky, like aligning your bonnet catches. Oh, there we are. Thanks, Matt. Just the little things. Yeah. I'm tempted to shut it again. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. That's shut now. Heaps of space, mate. Is that? Yeah, heaps. That's good. Looking at upside down. That's good there and it's good there. I think that's just about enough. I'm glad I didn't go 550. Yeah. Is that booked? Yeah. I'm not doing jam myself again. Alright, well, let's see what we've got in here. Hello. Hi Stuart. Oh, they're very good, very good. That was a totally spontaneous reaction. <laughs> wow. Mate, you, this thing's taking shape. Yeah, it's in place at least. Um, those those batteries look exactly like mine are going to. I follow I followed your example. Yes. Yeah, someone's copied someone. Yes. <laughs> I've got unashamedly, I've copied you. Shared, we'll call it shared. Yeah. So there are cooling plates vertically arranged. Nice. So two, four, six, eight. And underneath as well. Oh yes. There are three on their sides oh, underneath. Yeah. Eleven and five mate sixteen and then two more somewhere else. There's also the two on the back. Oh yeah. Okay. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen. And then the other five going down three and two. Makes eighteen. It'll be perfect for you. <laughs> but your weight balance is great because here's the wheels on this the center line of the ax front axle, it's not an axle but the hubs, is in front of your batteries. Yep. Which is great. My, mine, unfortunately, the battery is going to be centred right on the on the front, so I'm, I might have a bit more understeer than you. Your polar moment of inertia will be fucked. <laughs> that's that's the technical term. I love it. This is really taking shape. Look at all the space. What are you going to put in there? What radiator? Okay. Um, air conditioning compressor. Mm. DC to DC converter. Mm. Uh, the pump for the um, brake booster. Mm -hmm. So all the ancillary bits that go into the bonnet will be. Yeah, tucked around there. There's very little room left in the actual engine bay area. That's really good. Well designed battery box. Yeah, mine has far less space here now. I've only got about a hundred mil from here to the front of the, the battery box I've designed because they're they're all in the front. My tunnel is too narrow. You're, you've got a nice wide tunnel. You can actually fit the batteries. Yeah. But unfortunately, mine tapers in. You just and have a torque tube, whereas I've got oh. had a gearbox. Yes, indeed. And there's the, that's a very familiar accelerator. Mm -hmm. 
uh, out of the MG. And I want to uh, make this up so there's a sort of a plate there, yeah. and it's pulling against that. Yeah, yeah. Chop this off. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really just using it as a not as a pedal, yeah. but as a potentiometer, yep. basically. So using that with, with your existing throttle cable. Yep. yep. I've I've tried to get my pedal heights right so the you know, but it's just on feel. So when you get a bit of break, you can heel and toe. Yeah. Nice. And then I realised I don't need to heel and toe because there are no gears. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is, that's familiar. That's where we're about to be now. This is the contactor box from the MG's battery pack. Yep. Okay, so and I've, tell us about it. I've hijacked it using these vampire connectors, as I call them, mm -hmm. so that the open inverter board in the Tesla SDU actually controls it. Okay. So it closes the main, the main negative contactor, the pre-charge contactor, and when you press the start button, it presses the main contactor, or closes the main contactor. Okay. Main negative, mm -hmm. uh, pre-charge, main positive. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the charge, um, like the charging of the battery okay. connectors, but not part of the running of the system. So this is straight out of the MG's battery box. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to be using more of it. I'm going to be using everything that was in here, including the BMS. So I well, suppose hopefully so am I. Okay. Um, except the BMS, you've got your own. You've got a different BMS? Nope, same oh. MG BMS. Okay. With the battery as 18 cells, at oh, of course. 18 modules, yep. um, I intend to be using the entire MG charging system and mm. maintenance system. Mm -hmm. The only part that I'm bypassing is the actual running of the motor, the, the volts to the motor. Right. This is the test control unit. Um, basically, ignition on, which closes the, the main negative and the pre-charge um, contactors. Mm -hmm. And once it's ready, once the the open inverter board is ready, you press the start button, which closes the main contactor, mm -hmm. and of course you've got your forward and reverse. And you've already tested that on the bench, haven't you? Yeah, there's a video the, on my channel of, yeah. of me testing that sitting over there. And there's the link just up there to the to the uh, video on your channel. <laughs> Will this work? Who knows? <laughs> Keep the smoke in. Yeah. yeah, that's our motto. Keep the smoke in. <laughs> okay, so these are the connections to the existing BMS? Yep. Okay. And this one here as well. Right. Well Matt's going to discover all this in a few days' time when we pull our one apart. But this is this is really handy. We'll we'll just find a way to mount this on the front of our battery box. Mm. There's your Tesla motor. It's the SDU. Yeah. Modified running in reverse direction. Yeah. That was clever. So the motor and gear reduction box is a, and inverter is ahead of the axle. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Back of your battery box there with the extra five batteries we mentioned. Yeah, hanging low at the moment. It's not bolted up, it's just for access. My battery's hanging even a lot lower than that. <laughs> True. It's dragging on the ground, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, the reason I've come around today, can you lend me some high voltage stuff so sure. that we don't electrocute ourselves? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah? Is Thousand it? volt gloves. Actually, these are four. Oh, apart. those ones are now rated at 14 volts. But yeah, no, anyway. Have to be replaced. So, there's three sets of gloves there's the outer glove. The inner glove and a oh, yeah. inner inner glove. Mm. Thousand volt insulated socket set. Fabulous. Thank you. The screwdrivers also oh. thousand volt. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes. There is a complete video on the disassembly of the MG battery on my channel as well. So, so what's next for you? Uh, getting the battery wired up through the um, contact box, mm -hmm. through the distribution unit, mm. power distribution unit, it's the same as my one. and to the motor itself. With a little tamper switch on the side. So that people don't go, oh I wonder what's in here, I'll just... As soon as, as soon as you open the lid, that goes, breaks the thing, disconnects the contactors. Ah, uh, that's interesting because because it won't with mine because I'm overriding that. Yes. I might have to build that into it as well. Well, or just put it, just get some text and write on the top going, Fucking don't touch. Yeah. People contain smoke too. Rear suspension on this is a nice design. Yeah, what a good car. It's all double wishbone front and rear. Yeah. Have you been using them a lot? <laughs> no, I haven't used them at all. They've been hung up over there. Yeah. yeah. That's not good. No. The first set I got went like this, and I contacted the the uh, provider, mm. and they sent me another set saying they should be they might, might be faulty. Because these are just as bad. Yeah. Yes, that's don't show a, that. Don't show that's, that. That's like that's like a mini version of the Last Supper. Use your imagination. See, look, just like that. See, that's the Last Supper. 
I'm afraid I don't have that much imagination. <laughs> I've seen your posts on Facebook. You've got a lot of imagination. <laughs> Honda S2000 EV. Complete with the same battery packs as mine, but with Tesla power. Won't it be interesting to see how fast they are? Yeah. Down the road, episode 56, drag race. <laughs> the real problem is we're using the same battery. So if I'm going to be faster, more powerful, I'll be asking more out of the battery, mm. which stresses the battery more. Mm. So we'll see who gets to the finish line first and who ignites first. There will be no ignition. And, and look, let's face it, they, they really over-engineer these cars in the interest of safety. They've got to handle all sorts of climates and temperatures from very, very cold to very hot. So we know that the standard MG electronics that I'm using is, is not pushing the battery hard. Um, you, and, have, and you, I'm, have, you have more faith in I, I, MG SAIC I, I, than I, I do. I am developing a newfound respect for MG's engineering, to be right. honest. Are you going to take it to shows and, and confuse people? Yes. And they'll go, oh, why did you do that? Why didn't you just keep it? Why didn't you supercharge it? Because I like to, I did supercharge it and turbocharged it. Oh, right. Okay. AV was the next step. And I like talk. Off the line. Mm. Will it smoke the tyres, do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Yes. It's, it's going to weigh the same as it previously did. It's going to have a lot more torque down low. Mm. Um, yeah. And it spun the tyres before, so... Can't wait. It's going to be able to withstand 9 Gs of deceleration if, uh, in the event of a worst case crash mm. without, without shearing off. So those mounts look very, very solid. That's a standard, standard mount there? Yeah, it's a standard gearbox mount. Yeah, and that's really strong. Yeah. Good. And the weighting is the similar, similar to the original motor and gearbox. 180 kilograms at the front, 100 kilograms at the rear. Right. So your car's weight will be about the same as... It's looking like it, yeah. Right, and the same weight distribution? Yeah, 50-50. Fantastic. So that's our visit to Wayne's place today. Who's going to be on the road first? Probably you. Uh, I might be rolling first, but yeah, it won't be finished first. Getting it working is one thing. Getting it drivable is the next thing. Yeah. Getting it registered yeah. is a major, major step. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching.